Welcome back. Now, we're still talking about medical stuff, drugs, you know, they're, they're medical stuff. Well, we're, sti we're still in the medical area. Um, widely regarded not only as another clinic, but rather as a pioneer and institution in the medical sector. Bridge Clinic is 20 years old. What a milestone. We have the founder of Bridge Clinic, Dr. Richard Ajayi, with us this morning. Dr. Ajayi, good to see you again. Thank you for inviting me. I remember when you first opened, when we were still at Maryland, you came and told us about, at that time, the Bridge Clinic. The Bridge Clinic. <laughs> now you are just Bridge Clinic. <laughs> well, the, di the medical director is also here with us, Dr. Tony Ajayi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you for having us. So felicitations would be in order. Congratulations will be in order. Thank you. The 20 year old, some of them actually are getting married at 20 these days. <laughs> so, congratulations. Bridge used to be known as the IVF clinic. It was the IVF center. And I'm sure that uh, you've encountered some strange reactions from people when you tell them what you do. Tell us about some of those experiences. Well, I think uh, you will remember a very interesting one about 20, oh, yes. 20 years ago. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> on your show, um, where I think um, your co-anchor um, was not uh, positively disposed <laughs> to the idea of IVF, and we had a reverend gentleman on the show as well. And, and the accusation that was levied on us was that we were playing God. Um, and uh, I think my, my response was a simple one that, you know, man does not make life, only God makes life. Um, and what IVF does is just to give people who are being denied an opportunity. Uh, so, um, you know, God gave us the knowledge, every good and perfect gift is from God. Um, IVF lets you into God's throne room so he can lay hands of blessing on you. So we, don't, we, we, we cannot play God. Um, and so those are the kind of accusations. Uh, of course, in the early days, it's not possible to do IVF in Nigeria. The climate is wrong. The conditions are wrong. But, but I think it's, you know, when we started, IVF had been going for quite a few years, and this was something we were doing in the UK. So as far as I was concerned, all we needed to do was make the conditions right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've been blessed with a lot of success. It's a lot of success. 2,550 lives birthed by reason of what the bridge does. Is that true? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, we, you know, every, every success is celebrated, so we count them. I'm sure. <laughs> because, we, as you know, you know, we have a lot of success. We also have a lot of failures. Mm. Um, you know, IVF um, is not 100%. And when you're doing well in your bedroom, you have a 25% chance of success. So most couples will need to do more than one. So when we get a success, it's a big deal. So we count them, um, and to make sure that we count them properly, um, every year we get um, Alexander Forbes to come in and audit all the uh, results just to be sure that they're correct. And we've been doing that for many years, so we're pretty sure um, and accurate. You're sure there's none missing? We're sure there's none missing, yes. <laughs> Tony, you want to say something? <laughs> I agree. You agree? <laughs> you can't call. Absolutely. We, we stand by our numbers, absolutely. Okay, interesting. Um, but what would you say, this, what you've done in this past 20 years, how would you say has impacted the lives of your clients? And indeed, Nigerians. Nigerians. Um, I mean, I think the awareness of IVF is so much greater now. You know, everyone knows about IVF. Everyone knows that now they have a chance, you know, if they're struggling with conceiving, they've got a chance. I think what we've done is essentially set the bar for how IVF clinics should be run. Because we adhere to international standards, we are all about quality. So I think people know that, and that's why our clients keep on coming back to us. All right, we'll take a moment and go on a quick break. When we'll come back, we're going to talk to Richard and Tony. They need to tell us some secrets there, in case you want to start an IVF clinic yourself. <laughs> Don't go away, Jennifer. Welcome back. You're hearing us. We're talking in the back end here about how interesting 
this procedure is and the impact it has. Um, Richard, uh, as a Nigerian, it's painful for me to even think that the, lack, the element of trust as regards IVF is way down there. So, what is contributing to your good success if the level of trust is so mm -hmm. down there? And the, the superstitions around us are also still up there. They're not dwindled in any way. So, how is it that you're it's able... It's a great big secret. Yes, you don't talk about it. No one talks about it. Mm. Well, I, I think the, what we focus on um, at the British Clinic is quality management. Quality management really means everything you do to assure your value proposition to your customers. So as far back as 2004, we were one of the first clinics in the world, actually. They are certainly the first clinic in the English-speaking world to set up a quality, internationally accredited quality management system. So we brought in Quality Austria um, to audit us. Now, what does this mean? It means everything that we do is broken down. So you can't make it up. We have SOPs for everything. And that makes sure that everything is standardized. So what it appears complex is broken down into a series of steps. And everybody must follow those steps. And with that, and that's what we've been, we, we've been doing. So it's not about a doctor. It's about the system. Mm. So where doctors come and go, nurses come and go, the system bridge remains. And that has allowed us to be consistent, um, irrespective of who leaves us um, and who comes. Um, bridge clinic system remains there. So mm. that's really, really, um, I think, the, what we focused on uh, mm. the most. So it's about maintaining the standard all the time. Why does it seem so difficult to maintain standards? After all, you're not the only IVF clinic in Lagos. Well, what are you doing right that others are not doing right? Or so right. I think you can you can liken the IVF business to the aviation industry. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's operations management. Okay, meticulous processes, adherence to detail, and just making sure that you're very deliberate in everything that you do. Now, what you see in Nigeria is a lot of a lot of aviation companies come and go, and very few are, are sustained. And I think the issue really is operations management. And so that's what we focus on. So, and then that's one. The other thing that's very important to us is ethics. We're very ethical. So we put the patient first. You know, the principles of ethics do no harm, always do good, justice, fair play. So informed consent, honesty, openness in all that we do. We focus on excellence and innovation. And in putting these things forward, um, and we, we really take a lot of time to drill this into everybody that works with us. This is important because if you don't get it right and you want to start to get things, you want to you manage it, which is the Nigerian way, mm. everything falls apart. Mm. So we, we have a very long-term view on everything that we do. Mm. It's about building the brand, making sure we're consistent in the delivery of pregnancy. And let me ask you this, Tony, being the chief medical director, what would be the standard operating procedure today if you walked into the office now? As in... We're keeping our stance. So as you walk into the mm -hmm. what will be the first thing that needs to be in place if it's not in place? Um, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think we have, so we have SAPs for everything, like uh, Dr. Jai said. Um, operational readiness. So I think every morning you've got to ensure that actually the clinic is ready to run. So that's equipment, that's staffing, manpower planning, the cleaners, you know, everything, the security men. So that's the first Even thing. down to security men. Absolutely. We have, an SAP, we have SAPs for our security men as well. Because we want our client to come into the clinic to have a, a, a totally different experience, a five-star experience. So our security men have SOPs in terms of how they um, receive our clients. So no client, for instance, should have to horn. The gate should be opened before you know, they, they actually need to horn. Our security men will, if it's raining, they have a branded umbrella. They open the doors, they smile. So there's actually detailed procedures even for our security men. So that's a level of detail that we really believe in at the Bridge Clinic to ensure that as soon as you walk, come through our gate, you just have a totally different experience. You feel like you're abroad. At the end of the day, you know, we're... <laughs> you know, we're tying all this into the issue of trust. Yeah. So as soon as I walk in through the gate, 
you want me to trust you absolutely. that I'm in the right place to get the kind of service that I want. Is absolutely. that it? Absolutely. Because trust, you know, trust is earned. That's our 20 year, um, one of our 20 year oh, okay. phrases at the moment. Because we believe that you know, our clients have put so much trust in us over the years. We've built up this brand. We've focused on quality. We've focused on ensuring our standards are consistently high. And that's how you earn trust. Because to care for a client properly, to ensure their safety, they must trust you. Because mm. without trust, healthcare doesn't work. Dr. Richard Ajayi, you, that phrase, trust is earned. Being a Nigerian, what would, would think that, let me read it out, what would think that you would have chosen a, a phrase like Nigeria's most fertile fertility clinic? But you chose, you guys chose to dwell on trust being earned. Why? Are you a person of faith? Well, absolutely. Um, I am a person of faith. Um, and, I, and trust is, and is all about the patient. Um, because when a patient comes to you with infertility, there's not, they're not ill, they're not unwell. They're just not able to do what they expect to is something that is natural. And um, the way Nigeria is, they've been to many places, there's a lot of fear. Um, we need to let them know they've come to a sanctuary, um, a place where they can put all their, their fears at rest and, and come to us. And so that's something that is key to us. So trust is the foundation of everything that we do with our patients. Because if they don't trust us, they're not going to commit to the treatment. So trust is really key. When we talk about Nigeria's most fertile clinic, I think we're just talking about ourselves. Mm. And it, that speaks for itself in the results. What is important is that we speak to each client at a very personal level um, to be able to engage them and to get their commitment into the process. Because IVF is not easy. Um, it's a very stressful process. It's expensive. Um, and um, like I said, the, sometimes it doesn't work. So it's absolutely important that um, that trust element is there. So if it doesn't work, it's not that we didn't do the right thing. It just didn't happen this time. And you need to commit to the process to try it again. You didn't pray hard enough. Well, as you know, <laughs> as you know all, all we do is we put the sperm and the egg together and then we pray because only God can give life. We cannot give life. Um, but what we can assure is that the conditions must be perfect because the eggs and sperm are very fragile. The temperature has to be right. The, 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 partial, the CO2 has to be right. You mustn't leave the, the eggs out of the incubator for too long. The people handling it must know what they're doing. So this is a very, it's very fragile. So everything must be done properly. Mm. And, and if that's not done properly, then you're not going to get a good result. Yeah, you know, before you made that statement, I was going to ask you, you said, stressful. what's stressful about taking one egg and one sperm and putting it together? For the, non for the non-medical personnel, that might sound like, come on, you're going to just pick that, drop there, and, uh, and let's and, go. I mean, let's go. But now. hey, 20 years down the line, 20 years, it's, not, it's no mean feat. What's next for Bridge? Well, I think, um, you know, we, we, we want to continue to maintain our position in the fertility space, which is where we've always been. Uh, but increasingly, a lot of our patients are asking for more. Um, you know, when we started, we wanted that, that singular focus. But patients are asking for more services. They want antenatal care with us. Their husbands are hypertension. They want to provide services. So we are, we are opening some more clinics um, to support the requirement of our patients um, and leveraging the equity um, of trust that we've earned in fertility uh, to provide other service. So the future really is about trying to turn the bridge clinic into a platform for doctors. Because what we've done with quality management, I think we need to try and export to the whole of healthcare. Um, and I think healthcare is about quality assurance. You cannot, it's a non-negotiable because you're dealing with people's lives. So you can't just guess it, you can't wing it. You have to be deliberate and you have to be precise in making sure you get things right. And I think that's something that we've learned um, how to do and I think we can take that to health. Let, let me take you back a bit. And I'm going to be very specific with this question. You know, when he talked about the experience going through IVF, I'm sure you had some emotional moments with patients who have been unable to conceive. Tell us what kind of counseling you've had to give them. So I think it starts with ensuring that when, you, when, a client, when a client has sort of started their treatment with us, that we're very honest and transparent with them about their chances of success. You know, and we're very clear and let them know that, you know, 
it's highly likely that this is not going to work the first time, as opposed to that it's definitely going to work. I think having that understanding at the beginning really helps down the line when, it, when things don't work. Because if you have someone who has been promised, oh, you're going to get pregnant, definitely, and then they don't, it's so much more difficult. Yeah. But I think you know, we, we definitely ensure that we are very, very transparent, because honesty is one of our core values. So we ensure that our clients know the reality, that you're going to need maybe one, two, probably three cycles, actually, before you fall pregnant, because that's a reality of oh. IVF. But obviously, you know, those clients who don't fall pregnant, they still come back to us. You know, we have counsellors in the clinic. That's all part of our treatment plan. Um, everyone sees a counsellor. And we just ensure that our doctors review them. We follow them up. We emotionally manage these clients by keeping in touch regularly, checking how they are. You know, we have a sort of a schedule, essentially, to make sure that we keep in touch with them for quite a few months after mm -hmm. things have not worked out. Mm -hmm. And just to you know, ensure that they're going to come back so we can have another go. Mm -hmm. We make sure that we have a very honest breakdown of their treatment you know, and explain to them you know, all the conditions were perfect, for instance, but for whatever reason it didn't work. Or maybe we can try something different next time and so on. But it's all about honesty and just Does being transparent. Does that always happen for um, one whose first cycle has failed? Do they always come back for a second? They do, because we ensure that we follow them up and we emotionally manage them. And we just explain, you know, it's important that we just keep them with us to just explain that this is not unusual. Like I said earlier on, they're already aware at the beginning that that's the likely outcome. So therefore, they are going to come back because they know that I'm going to need to have another go. What I about those who are success stories? Do you, do you still keep in touch with them? Absolutely. And stay in touch with your babies? Absolutely. In quotes. <laughs> Absolutely, we do, we do. You know, we follow them up, antenatal care, now that we've got our primary care centers as well. So a lot of our fertility clients, once they get pregnant, we then look after them antenatally all the way up until we then um, refer them for delivery. Okay, I have a comment here from a Celestine Wese who says, in IVF, are you treating disease or reacting to desire? Well, disease. Yeah, well, I know you said something when they come in, they're not they're ill. They're not ill. They're not ill. So what are you doing? Are you, is, it, is it about the desire? of the individual. Are there, are there embryos that are thrown out in the course of the procedure and all of that? He's, he's Celestine where he's asking. Yeah, well, it's about the desire. I mean, not everybody, you know, who you know, has a challenge comes to us. So the desire is what propels them uh, to come for treatment. So it's about the desire. Um, we, you know, we have, in the early days of IVF, that was a big issue, um, throwing away spare embryos. Uh, but today we have cryopreservation. Um, so patients who want to keep their embryos, um, who don't get pregnant the first time, you can cryopreserve your embryos, and after one or two months, you can come back to have the cryopreserved embryos transferred without going through the process of taking all the injections and egg collection, which is part of the stress we were talking about earlier. So the, the, the chances are there to freeze your embryos and have them transferred later. Mm. Interesting. Or can I donate the embryo to somebody else? You, I mean, technically you can, um, but, but I think um, we don't advise embryo donation okay. um, because for ethical reasons, um, you know, I mean, it, embryo donation, I mean, uh, the, idea, the idea of people, siblings being from different families, uh, <laughs> so there, there are a lot of ethical issues in IVF, um, and, and we have to be very careful what we do, um, you know, because um, we, we must just focus on the commercial side, you must focus on the human side. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Well then, congratulations then, Bridge Clinic. Uh, Dr. Richard Ajayi, founder of Bridge Clinic, and Dr. Tony Ajayi, medical director of Bridge Clinic. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, celebrations, celebrations, and celebrations. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. I thought we were going to see a mighty thank you very much. shake. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time you invite us, we'll be <laughs> <laughs> no Sunrise will return in just a moment. Do stay with us.